Well, hello again and welcome to my shop. My name is Dima. Before we start the build of this display, we're just going to go through some of the features of it. So, it sits at an angle and the way it does that is by, it's got two little uh, pegs in the back here, aluminum dowels, whatever you want to call them. They are removable so you can lay this display flat. Now, it has a plexiglass lid that slides out if you want to get access to your pens. This display holds 11 pens and all the grooves are covered in black velvet so to not scratch your finish. I constructed this display out of maple and used walnut for the miter splines. Now the miter splines they serve two purposes. Not only to keep the miters together, it also goes across the insert that I put in there. And you will see more detail in the video. Well let's get started with the build. If you want to build one of these yourself, there will be a download link available at the end of this video. Let's get started. So before I start with anything, I go through all the plans and make sure I understand what I'm doing. And the next thing I do is start cutting all my, my material, the final thickness which in this case is one and a quarter inches. So once all the material is cut, I go ahead and cut them to length, which is the front and the back rails for the box. And then I move on to the sides. So pretty much what I'm doing is building a frame, kind of like a picture frame that has four sides. So once all those pieces I cut, I lay out all my pieces how they're going to glue together and I mark the angles of where the miters are going to go. It's also a good idea to number those miters because the miter jig that I have, um, it, it's calibrated to 45 degrees and you want to cut those angles at the same time. So here I'm just lining up all my pieces to make sure that blade cuts at exactly the right spot. And all I'm doing is using the curve of the existing line to just line up one of the edges. So once all those cut, I just make sure that everything's good before I move on to the next step. So the next step is actually pretty simple. It's, it's uh, to cut the dado for the plexiglass. And I just lower the blade so it protrudes about a quarter of an inch out and then I adjust the fence to have a quarter of an inch from the blade. And at this point what you want to do is you want to make sure you cut the dado on the right side and I chose a side with my pencil marks and I make sure I cut all my pieces on that one side because then everything will line up correctly. Don't worry about plexiglass fitting that's going to be the next step. Just cut the dados on all four pieces and move on to gluing it together. So here you can see the dados on there. I use an eighth inch kerf. Uh, my blade is eighth an inch, so that's what I used. So I use tight bond too for pretty much all my projects. Um, I really have no preference in what type of glue. This glue serves me well, so that's what I'm using for this project. I spread the glue evenly across the whole joint to make sure I have equal coverage of glue. So I use my BASI clamp, uh, it's a quarter clamp, it applies equal pressure on all sides. And then I after glues, I pretty much move on to the next step, which is cutting out the insert for the grooves where the pens sit. And for this, I use MDF, and really you could use whatever you want. Um, I use MDF because I afterwards apply uh, velvet lining to it, so you can use wood if you want to. That's also a personal preference. So I make sure when it's all cut, that insert will fit snugly and tightly into that area. 
Uh, I don't want it to be loose because I'm not gluing it in there. And I use a round over box bit or whatever you call it uh, to create all those grooves. I'll make sure it's the right height. All this is available in the plans. So what I do is I measure out the center of that insert and I cut one groove. Once that's cut I adjust my fence one inch is closer to the bit and then I cut on one side flip the board over and cut the other side to make sure that they're evenly spaced from the center and I just do that for the rest of them until I pretty much get to the end of the material. Then just making sure that all the burrs are sanded off because MDF doesn't machine very well it, also, it always leaves some kind of a burr on the edges there. And then go ahead and slip it into your box. Making sure that all the edges are flush. And move on to the next step, which is the miter spline. So here you can see uh, the dimensions I chose for the miter splines. I wanted to make sure that the miter splines cut into that insert so they hold it in place. So I've already got all my measurements set, my blade height is set, and I just go ahead and cut all four uh, corners for the miter slots. Now you might have to readjust your fence to make those slots thicker or wider depending on what kind of uh, miter slot material you use. In my case I was just it was fine for one pass so that's what I did so I I marked off where my triangles have to be or how big they have to be and I cut one on the bandsaw and then I used that one that I cut as kind of a template or a guide to cut all the rest of them so I didn't have to mark it all and as you can see I cut them to so I would save as much material as possible Once again, I, I squeeze in the glue, spread it around to get even coverage, and then just put in the splines. Now once I installed the splines, uh, I went ahead and put some clamps on the corners because I noticed that the material kind of flared out and I wanted even uh, material to material adhesion so the clamps kind of helped it. So once the glue dried, I went ahead and removed it and I used a flush trim router bit to take off the axis. You can use a belt sander or any any other source that you have if you don't have a router. Uh, this step is really, there's more way to do this step than just how I'm doing it right here. So the next thing I do is I cut the two holes for the two pegs or the two dowels that are that will act as legs for the stand. And those are cut at 30 degree angles. Uh, I kind of didn't want to measure the angles so I just put a 2x4 at the end of it and that I think that gave me a rough idea just make sure that you don't drill past the material because you don't want a hole on the opposite side because you will be cutting a chamfer a 30 degree chamfer on the opposite side make sure that they also are both equally you know the depth is equal because the pegs won't line up correctly if there are different depths on the drill so here you can see I'm cutting the 30 degree bevel on one side. Now if you drilled too deep for those pegs at this stage those holes will pop right out and your material will be ruined and you'll have to figure out a way how to cover them up. So pretty much the last step is to cut the plexiglass to fit any form you want. Install those pegs. Make sure everything's nice and tight. So go ahead and sand your project once done 
and apply any finish that you would like. I used three coats of Danish oil because that's my preferred finish. And here you can see the final product. Well, thanks for watching. The download link for the PDF plans is right below. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you got any additional questions. And subscribe if you haven't done so right here. Have fun in the shop, but be always safe doing it. See you next time.